Welcome to the HammerFiber.com studio. Now, let me tell you what we're going to talk about today. It's very exciting, only if you're having internet problems. And I don't know if you ever had internet problems in the past. Like, have you ever been without your connection for a few hours and you're losing your mind because you can't connect with your loved one or in business? Or what about a day without your internet? What about a week? Have you ever gone a month? Well, I can tell you. I've gone three months without an internet connection before a company could repair it, and it was devastating socially and financially in my business, and we're here to bring about solutions to that kind of nonsense that can happen in the real world. And uh, I'm Bobby D. I'll be your host here at Hammer Community as we take you through this journey. Yes, we're going to humanize the internet. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we're going to make sure that your needs are taken care of, that there are real people behind the scenes that really care about your needs and internet. And today, I'm going to introduce you to the CEO of a new technology. It's a patent technology globally. It's going to sweep the nation across the U.S. We're going to tell you which markets are going to open, which markets are open, and you'll meet them today. But before I do that, what I want to do is I want to make sure that you understand where you can get your information as we venture through this journey. So I'll give you three websites, three point of reference, so you can inform yourself as to why you'll want hammerfiber.com technology, right? The first one is hammercommunity.com. You're probably watching the, um, the, the webcast right now on this site. You may be watching on other platforms across the internet as well. You may be uh, watching on YouTube. If that's the case, just know that the best place to interact with us is hammercommunity.com. Now, for the product line, you want to go to the following website, hammerfiber.com. That's where you'll discover this patent technology and how it can serve you. Now, if you want to know more about the company behind the scenes, the people, and why they're poised for incredible success, go to hammerfiber.biz. All right? That's the, uh, the cleanup. That's what we wanted to do right now. So what I want to do is I want to pull in Mark Stogdill, CEO of Hammer Fiber Biz, live from New Jersey. Mark, welcome to the call. I'm excited that you're here with us. Bob, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. All right. Well, very good. So now, let's talk about uh, maybe the since the United States doesn't even make the top ten list as uh, quality internet. Can you address number one the problems with internet in the U.S. and how Hammer Fiber is poised to bring about some amazing solutions? Sure. Um, obviously, this is a pretty salient problem here. And why the U.S. is so far behind the rest of the world. Uh, the first one's technology, the second one is economics, and the third one is some regulatory matters that are still ongoing. So from the technology standpoint, part of the problem is there's a huge push to bridge the digital divide, but there's not a lot of technologies that actually do that in parity. Most of what you're seeing in the most remote and rural markets is substandard internet that doesn't meet the FCC's requirement for broadband access. We're talking less than five megs uh, to a huge portion of the country. The FCC recently <laughs> released a statistic that 29 million Americans have less than broadband access. That is uh, and it's a huge problem. And part of that is operators not having the right tools to address it in a way that can be cost effective to the consumer, but also uh, makes a business case out of it. And that really ties into the second point, which is economics. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the biggest problem there is that we exist in, a, in an ISP monopoly. Uh, back in 2014, Tom Wheeler, who was the chairman of the FCC at the time, released a staggering statistic. 75% uh, of Americans, that's three out of every four people, had only one choice for ISP. Unbelievable. Let, let that sink in for a second. Three out of every four people could only get their internet access from a single Tennessee market. One operator with whatever services that they were offering at whatever price points. 
So even in some of the most advanced markets, there may only be two or three operators. So it's either a monopoly or it's a duopoly or whatever it is, it's sort of, they play off of each other in a way where the prices are set and there's no, there's no opportunity for the customers to find other types of alternatives, which you get in pre pretty much every other industry has multiple alternatives to whatever the primary product is. Sure. It just doesn't have that. Uh, which leads to the third point, which is the way that the, the U.S. has approached it. The reality is we can't make up our minds whether this is a service or a utility uh, and whether or not this is the, the given right of every American to have or whether or not um, this is just another product that can be purchased for convenience. But the reality of it is, it's simple, is Internet access for everyone, every man, woman, and child will have ramifications, positive ramifications, for the entire country. Um, there, are there are studies and statistics out there that if every single person who's lacking broadband access, that 29 million person strong market, if they were able to have reliable internet to conduct business, to be socially responsible, to be part of the democratic process, to, to, for, to engage in commerce, that the financial position of the country would increase 1.2% a year. No doubt. Uh, that is substantial. So the reality of it is internet is extremely important. It's, it's certainly outstripped its original use case of convenience and some information gathering. It's a life essential uh, tool yes. and it's more of a tool than a service. Uh, and these are things that really need to, to be addressed. And we are very cognizant of this problem. Uh, and our position on this is very simple. We use a technology platform that's proprietary that we think is going to change everything about distribution of broadband, both in rural markets and in competitive urban markets. Uh, we can do this at a fraction of the cost of traditional infrastructure. So we're talking about wireline infrastructure that has a, a very heavy cost basis that sort of blows the economics of providing internet out of the water. Um, we, can, we can do that at about you know less than 10% of what a, a cable provider can do in terms of high-speed connectivity to everybody. And the second part of that is that we are, we are sort of coming, we are developing the wireless uh, part of the platform so that there is no trade-off between what you get on a cable system and what you can get through a wireless system. Because there's plenty of wireless operators out there. There's something like 2,500 wireless ISPs in the country, and they have about less than 1% of the overall market share. And the reason is they don't have the technology to compete, but they have the resources and they have the local in-market knowledge, but they just can't get that better service to their customers. So our objective here is to bring this to everybody. We're going to both roll this out organically with our own systems, with our own teams, and we're going to also partner with a lot of these sort of forlorn ISPs in the different parts of the country that have everything that they need to be successful, with, but they just don't have that access technology. So we're looking at this both as a competitive choice in the, in the metro areas and as a digital divide bridging choice uh, in the rural areas. And, and so far what we've seen uh, in our current deployment and what we've seen in our testing, uh, this is this is it. We, we've solved the problem, and we're really just very excited over the next few years to get this service, this important life-needing service, in the hands of as many uh, people as we possibly can. Beautiful. So your Hammer Fiber is going to break up the monopoly in a Wi-Fi technology, and we don't have to get into the technology side. We can save all the details of that some other time, but it is exciting. People can access that information at Hammer Fiber dot com or hammerfiber.biz right mark so very exciting um beyond the internet now obviously hammer fiber it's new most people have never heard about it um you're providing a whole lot more than just internet can you can you touch base a little bit about the triple play package that is now being offered in the new jersey area absolutely so going back to what i said about the digital divide you know the reality of it is that we're uh, 
the government and the major corporations, the biggest ISPs, they're focusing on just internet service. Uh, but the reality of it is that cable companies are the biggest monopolies in the entire country. Mm. And one of the things that they sort of have the control over, obviously, is the linear television. And there's a lot of ancillary services that go with that. But the reality is that people want linear television, even with the advent of this cord cutting interest, because at the end of the day, there's just some content that you can't get if you don't have a linear television service. And we're sort of kind of converging those ideas together. We're giving you all the broadband that you could possibly need to run all of your OTT applications and stream your Netflix and stream your Hulu and, and do all of the things that you're used to doing and, and do it maybe even better than you were doing it. But we're also bringing in the other services that are more than just convenient services, specifically telephone which is, uh, you know, is the lifeblood of this country as well. Um, you need to have communications. Uh, and also in, in television in a way that is both familiar to people that have cable, but also really uniquely positioned um, as the OTT solution that it kind of is. So we took a lot of care and effort into building these back-end systems. This is not a resale platform. We are, the, we are the video operator. We have contracts directly with the broadcasters. We built a very slick, very usable interface for the customer set-top boxes that replicates the customer's experiences with the, with the incumbents that they currently get service from, but makes it even more accessible. Uh, and we deliver all that over the back of the broadband. So just the quality is really high. And you know, just from a technical perspective, it runs smoother. It runs faster. The the quality of the image it can do f true 4K. Uh, we have you know hundreds of 1080p HD streams. Uh, so there's literally no trade off, and we're looking for that single point of contact. People don't want to have 15 bills. Right. What they need to get everything from one place. So we realize that broadband, as important as it is, uh, needs to be paired with complementary services so that we can provide all of the different service suites that people are looking for in one single package. And that's why triple play is so important to us. And that is so affordable at hammerfiber.com. It's mind boggling. But again, you, you alluded to it indirectly by saying you can deliver service at a fraction of the cost of the competitor because your Wi-Fi, because of your technology, therefore you're passing on those savings. So triple play will start at uh, what price point, uh, Mark? For, for the people who have access to it in New Jersey? So for New Jersey right now, it's, a, uh, it's an add-on to the broadband service. So there are three packages. It starts at $20 a month, it goes up to $60 a month, and it depends on what you need, how much content you watch, what types of television you're specifically interested in. There's a package for everybody. Uh, and you graph that on to the broadband cost, and we're looking at a pretty significant savings. We've had customers report savings in excess of $100 a month over the previous cable bill. Uh, and it's all sort of, it's an a la carte add-on. There's a lot of flexibility, uh, and it gets better all the time. We continually add new content. We continually add new features, uh, some of which are going to be really exciting to the market. Uh, and we, not, we don't want to just create uh, you know, a competitive platform. We want it to be the platform of choice for people who not are just not only just tired of their cable, but are actually looking for something more than cable typically offers. And we think we've really struck that balance here. Let's talk about Baltimore because we're campaigning in Baltimore. We're looking for discontent internet users there, and there's a lot of them showing up on our Facebook page. But um, one of the questions that came up, and I need to find his name uh, give me a second here I think it was Scott um, oh hang on a minute I will find it right here uh, this lady was asking Debbie was asking when can they expect service in Baltimore well Debbie we are working hard right now uh, in the very early stages of our Baltimore deployment uh, right now we're targeting um, service testing uh, early second quarter of 2018. So it's just going to be a quick six month wait. Uh, and then we're looking at a very large rollout. So a lot of people in and around Baltimore will be able to get the service at that point. But stay tuned for updates. Check our website. Uh, there'll be a lot more about that to come. 
Beautiful. And um, for the people who are in rural areas, they don't have to worry too much about your ability to deliver because of the last mile technology. Can we talk about that just a little bit more? Because people are, don't have access to the regular monopolized internet and they're wondering, well, I'm living outside their jurisdiction. How does hammer fiber apply to me? Well, you know, to use Baltimore as a case in point, uh, I think it's important for the Baltimore community to know that we're not just targeting Baltimore City proper. Uh, the rollout that we plan to do over the next year uh, will be substantial and will include several rural markets within Maryland, um, in and around Baltimore, as far away as 40 or 50 miles from the city. Uh, some of these areas are extremely rural. Uh, they're outside of current franchise boundaries. Uh, there are no operators, uh, and they're they're stuck with you know a difficult access challenge for quality internet. Um, and we can achieve that not just by rolling out more infrastructure, but the fact that by our very nature, the last mile solution is designed to extend the edges of our network. So wherever the fiber is placed, and by the way. All of the back-end systems are fiber, so you're getting the highest quality throughput and bandwidth connection. But beyond that, our, our radio stations can transmit miles and miles and miles away from the fiber access points so that if you're outside of Baltimore or you're, you're a few townships away and we haven't, we're not in your town yet with fiber infrastructure, the wireless solution is there to provide you with service. Um, it has a very long reach, and the quality of service, as we said before, is identical to that you would get with fixed wireline. So the coverage zones are going to be very dense, uh, and we expect that we're going to do the, the first rollout is going to address a lot of customers, and then every few quarters we are going to be doing subsequent rollouts until every person who wants the service can get it. Beautiful. Now, how many more markets... Um are you targeting over the next several years across the U.S.? I, I mean, you, maybe talk about the Go Long Alliance that uh, was announced in July. Sure. So, you know, an important thing to understand about our system, as opposed to a lot of other wireless systems, is that we don't use unlicensed spectrum. And the reason we don't use that is because there's a lot of degradation and collision in the signal process that creates a poor end user experience. License spectrum allows us to be the only tenant on that frequency channel, which means that we're not getting any type of outside interference from anybody else at all. And that helps us deliver a very high quality of service. When we go along, uh, we come together. They own a lot of spectrum throughout the entire country, 49 markets, about one third of the US land mass. And we've come together to utilize their spectrum for our services uh, and we expect to start rolling out many more markets over the next five years. Uh, markets as varied as Montana and California and Oregon and Iowa and Oklahoma and Texas and places where there is still this broadband access challenge that needs to be overcome, as well as some very major markets. So we don't want to, to people to think that just because you live in a city, uh, and you're still stuck with the same provider and the big and the high bill and the poor service that we're not paying attention to that either. Uh, we're really bridging the gaps between the urban and the rural, and we're going to be launching in some major cities as well. Um, so, you know, we're looking at probably 40 to 50 major deployments of the service over the next five years. It's going to be a busy uh, end of 2017 and 2018, setting the, the infrastructure for those markets. How exciting. Mark, uh, words of wisdom for the listeners who are tuning in, discovering the hammerfiber.com, hammerfiber.biz uh, site for the first time. What would you like them to do? Well, you know, we'd like you to keep following up. There's a lot of news that we continually release about our plans. Um, there's a lot of information on the web, on the websites you mentioned. You can read a lot more about us, who we are. Uh, and, you know, Bob, as we've sort of talked about, we're doing our best to be part of this sort of new age of broadband deployment that the country really needs. Um, and because we want to be at the forefront of that, we're really receptive to customer feedback. We want to know what people are want. 
We want to understand where their problems are. We don't want to look at this as an isolated problem in a vacuum. We want to understand from the people who we want to provide service to what they're looking for. Because one of the things we pride ourselves on is adaptability. We've already made a lot of changes to our current New Jersey deployment based on customer feedback. We've done it in quick order, uh, and we continue to do that every month. So it's important for us to get as much feedback as possible because we want this to be a very customizable, very user-friendly platform, and we will work hard to make sure whatever it is that you want as a customer, we're providing to you. So I, I would just say, Bob, you know, just Stay we want to be... Stay tuned. We want everyone to tell us what it is they're looking for. Beautiful. And you're accessible. That's the beauty through the Hammer Community Channel right here. We'll have you uh, as often as time permits. I know you're busy. We appreciate it today. And uh, we're going to wrap up the show, and I'll give some protocol to the listeners today on where to go, what to look for, and how they can be rewarded. So, Mark, thank you so much. Bob, thank you. It was my pleasure. We'll see you soon. All right. Ciao. That was Mark Stockdale from HammerFiber.com. Now, listen up. You want preferential connection. I'll give you a little insider, folks. You want to stay involved with Hammer Community because we're going to solve the problem collectively as a team, right? So go to HammerCommunity.com and you'll see the little banner down below that says uh, petition. Fill in the petition. You'll receive more information. But when you do that, Petition for what? Petition for better internet. When you are subscribed to hammercommunity.com, you're engaging with us. You get preferential connection when we come to a market near you, right? So what you want to do is go there now, fill out the form, let us know you're alive and well and you need good internet. And we'll connect with you as soon as we enter your market area, which in some cases will be in a few months. Baltimore is next. 49 other markets Mark was talking about. We will announce those markets in due time. So let me recap where you find the information. HammerCommunity.com is your community site where we live stream every Wednesday. And we will live stream while well, we live streamed yesterday. We tried to, right? <laughs> We're live streaming Thursday. But tomorrow we'll be streaming again at Hammer Community with the other personality behind the HammerCommunity.com, Mr. Steve Peck. He will join us. He will share with you what he discovered when he visited home uh, corporate home office last month in New Jersey. He's got a lot of great insights on marketing, the need for good internet, how to use good internet, and uh, he'll be with us tomorrow at 12 o'clock North American Eastern right here at hammercommunity.com. Remember to go to hammerfiber.com as well for the technology and uh, stay in tune with uh, the market development there. Last but not least, and very important, you want to know who's behind the company. It's a public company. It's Hammer Fiber Optic Investment Limited. Their domain is hammerfiber.biz. Now, the website is under rec reconstruction, but you'll have access to all the links you need to uh, find out more about the company, the executive, and the board of director there. So very, very uh, exciting times. There's no doubt about it. I'm excited to be your host along your journey for better internet. And... Um, we're going to wrap it up. How's that? What if we wrap it up? We'll see you tomorrow at 12 o'clock, North American Eastern, with Steve Peck. We'll give you more insights about hammer fiber technology and how it serves you socially or in business. I'm your host, Bobby D. Until next time. <laughs>